Atlanta's grown a lot over the season and um, they've, they're a really solid team all over the park. We do have a game plan, but I can't tell you that either. But <laughs> Welcome back to MLR Mic Check. I'm Danny Wexelman here with New York's Keta Pryor. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Very good, thank you. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm very excited to catch up with you. And I want to get into everything that New York has gone through this season, the wins, the couple of losses. But I want to start first with your rugby journey. And when you first picked up a ball, your first memory of playing rugby, of being around the sport. The, um, yeah, so where I'm from in New Zealand, rugby's like our main sport. Every little kid plays rugby. And when I was first taken to like play rugby games as a little kid, I didn't like it. So I just sat on the sideline, just making like, you know, like little daisy chains with flowers. My, I don't remember this, but my mum says, I just used to make daisy chains while everyone else was playing rugby. So I wasn't the biggest fan of it when I was growing up. Well, obviously something changed along the way. You found some love for it, whether that was because you were good at it or maybe your friends were playing it, but you told me that it runs in the family. This is a family sport and your granddad was someone who inspired you, impacted you. Tell me about your granddad, tell me his name and tell me a little bit about what he taught you about the game. Yeah, so my granddad's name is Albie Pryor and um, he was he made it quite fine rugby. He was a Māori All Black. And he was like, he was real big in my life growing up. My, so my dad was like my, I've got an older brother and he was his coach. So like on Saturdays, my dad would take, would be with my brother. So my granddad used to come and pick me up and take me to my games. And so like, we got like a really close bond, bond doing that. And so like, he became like a real big idol of mine, like still to this day, like I still think about him a lot. And what would you say maybe is the biggest lesson, whether it was life or sports that your granddad taught you? My granddad taught me, probably the hard nut. <laughs> probably, that's probably it. If I ever cried or anything, you'd just be like, toughen up. That's fair. That's a that's such a granddad thing to say. So he, he <laughs> played that role well. It's a very good life lesson, you know? Life throws things at you, you just gotta toughen up and move on. Yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned, you have had so many different experiences with rugby. It's taken you to different places. So I wanted to dive a little deeper about maybe some of the opportunities that rugby has afforded you since you've been playing. Yeah, rugby's given me a lot. Like um, I've been to many places around the world, like, you know, playing in New Zealand in the Super Rugby competition. We got to go to like Australia, South Africa, um, Argentina, I played over in Japan, played over in England, played and played games here in America. Like, you know, I've seen a lot of the world. It's, it's you know, it's showing me a lot. And it's, you know, I, I do owe rugby a lot. And yeah, it's, it's a great game. When you're sitting around with old friends or maybe you're back home with your brother or your family, is there a story you like to share? Is there a moment in your career that you think so fondly of or is just one of your favorites to share with people yeah i can but i can't tell you guys <laughs> nah so what would be like probably just playing alongside my brother is a massive one like i yeah i really enjoy playing alongside with him and like and the friends you make along the way too like it's yeah it's just amazing like the sort of people that you become really close with and become lo like lifelong friends i'm glad you brought up your brother dan who recently signed with San Diego. He's over here in the United States. I actually looked at his Instagram before we got on. It looks like he's settling in nicely in California and probably enjoying that weather right now, but the Legion are trying to make a playoff push. So they recruited your brother. So he might be competition down the line, but can you spotlight your brother? Tell me a little bit about him. Um, a little bit about my brother. He is a very relaxed character. A stiff breeze will blow that boy over. Nothing really seems to phase him. But um, he's a really good human being. He, um, he, he actually really suits a life in San Diego. He's just, he surfs, cruises along, just kind of takes life day by day. That's the San Diego way. So I have yeah. no doubt he's fitting in. He's when it comes to his game, when it comes to who he is on the field and, and the competitor he is, like, give me a little insight. Tell me something about him that, that I wouldn't know um, just from reading about him. 
Um, what is it? He, I don't know. He sort of becomes like a different player in the rugby field. He just sort of dives into everything. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, I guess it's like when someone puts that like cat mask on or something and they just have an alter ego and just turns into this aggressive person who I don't know. But um, he's a very skillful player and stuff like that. And can you tell me how everything happened, how he was able to come over here and join the team or, or what that experience was like from his point of view, a little insight into that? Yeah, so I, I think a guy who, because he was in Japan playing prior to this, and um, a guy in the team, I think uh, Paddy Ryan, the, the prop in their team, also played in Japan. So they're in the same team. And then I think they kind of just got talking and my brother and another good friend of mine, oh, well, Daniel's in mine, Tom Franklin, he also came from Japan and got them over there. So I guess he was like, just come to San Diego for a few weeks and get to experience America. And they're like, why not? Seems like a bit of fun. Yeah, and what did you think when all this went down? How did you feel? When, what, when I heard it was coming over? Uh, yeah, I couldn't wait. I was really excited. I was like, yes. <laughs> but um, so we just had our bye week last week. I was actually meant to fly over and go see him, but I didn't realize it was a six hour flight. So I was like, you're not that important. But <laughs> so I went to Nashville instead. <laughs> it's a far flight. Absolutely it is. They are three hours behind us on the East Coast. But I think that's awesome. And, and obviously they think so highly of your brother and the skills that he can bring over. So you guys already faced San Diego. So that won't happen until potentially some playoff action. So we'll keep an eye on, on that. I would, yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. You got your fingers crossed for that. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about New York. You you all won your last two matches and you have Atlanta this weekend. You beat Atlanta the first time around back in April. Obviously, you're not going to be sitting on your laurels, you know, assuming that you can beat them again. So have you talked about a game plan as far as how to attack them? Because they are ahead of you all in the Eastern Conference right now. You're battling for that top spot. So what is the game plan? Yeah, Atlanta's grown a lot over the season and um, they've, they're a really solid team all over the park. We do have a game plan, but I can't tell you that either. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, they're, they're a really good team. And obviously we're betting, battling for the top spot. So it'll be, a real, it'll be a really good game and it'll be a good measure of where we're at too, especially coming off the bye week, you know. So like the boys are well rested. So it'll be interesting. That's fair. You can't tell me anything. I respect that very much. Bye week, by the way, really quick. What did bye week look like? Did you do anything new, anything fun? Yeah, yeah. I went and experienced Nashville. So me, my flatmate Fussy, and another player, Dan Tollenhead, we flew down to Nashville, down, well, I don't know, across to Nashville and spent a few days down there, which I had a lot of fun. Nashville's a very cool place. Shout out to Nashville. I've never been to Nashville. It's super high on my list. So you beat me to it. Yeah. Always impressive. Hopefully some good music, some good food. All yeah, good music, good food, cheap drinks, a lot of fun. So I also wanted to ask you about beating LA and the kind of season that they are having, were having up until you all face them. And I, I was wondering, you know, what it took physically and mentally to come out knowing what LA brings to the table and you know, the rampage that they've been on and what that win did mean to your club. Yeah. LA, like, respectfully so that, they, like, everyone had them on a pedestal with the, the sort of players they had. But we just talked about it during the week, like, you know, like, they're just another team and it's just another game for us. So, like, that's the mentality we went in with it and obviously it, it proved well for us. But, you know, they were missing Matt Ghetto, so they will be a better team if we play them again. Who would you say are some of the people on your team who are leading conversations like that or the people who are speaking up saying, just another game, let's go about our business and get this done? Who are some of the names you can give me? Um, probably like the older guys in our team who have been there, like done this before. Andy Ellis is a big one. You know, he's a very experienced campaigner. Um, our captain, Butch, and like guys like Nate Brakeley who have like, you know, been around the system for a while and they know how this comp is. It's a long comp. So that's just boys like that who just kind of keep the boys on their feet and just, you know, one step at a time. Who's somebody that you've connected with the most on the team and why is that? Um, probably the, my flatmate who I live with, Fussy. 
he I uh, he was from New Zealand as well. We played against each other a couple of times, but we never really knew each other, if that makes sense. So when I flew here, they just chucked us in a room together and we become really good friends. Going back to the standings really quickly, New York is fourth overall and again, second in the Eastern Conference behind Atlanta. The wins that you guys have had, they, they've come in such a variety of ways. And I think we've seen that across the league this season, that there are games that have literally come down to the 80th and games that have been blowout games. What do you think have been the keys to success for New York to have such a successful run so far this season? Yeah, we joke about that a lot, actually. When, when we lose, we seem to lose really bad. We get beaten by like 30 points. Um, um, I don't know. We, we, we have grown a lot since our last loss. It was kind of like a big wake-up call for us, and we've changed up a few things and um, had like some real honest conversations, which really like proved like – like really helped it like helped us move forward and like each week we've gotten better and better and better so hopefully after this bye week it just carries on the same just a little snowball effect until further down the season all right my friend it is time for some bonus points are you ready let's go okay the first one who is the better athlete you or your brother i'm younger so me who has the best hair on your team? Who has the best hair on my, in our team? Um, Luke Hume. He has no hair, so he wins. And will you grow your hair back out? My hair. Oh, I got asked that question today, actually. It's getting pretty long. My partner wants me to grow it back out, but I'm not a big fan. It's far too hot over here at the moment, so I'm thinking about chopping it off. So if you know any good hairdressers around here... Yeah, I'll put a good word in for you. Yeah, definitely. What is only one thing you can tell me about your brother, Dan? Um, one thing about him, um, like I said, very relaxed character. One food that you would bring from home to New York? Oh, 100% like pies. Like you guys think of pies as dessert, but back home we have like steak and cheese pies, mince and cheese pies. Butter chicken pies. I miss them so much. I was talking about that the other day. I was like, damn, I want a pie. I think we have quiches. Have you had a quiche? You should try yeah, a quiche. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of like a quiche, but like inside it's just like mince, steak, cheese, and they're just delicious. So good. Okay, two more. Dinner with an athlete or celebrity past or present. Who would it be? Who would I want to really meet? Mm, ooh, Bob Marley. Bob Marley would be a good one. Excellent choice. And as I said earlier, you are a man of mystery, which is great for you, terrible for me. So one thing about you that I cannot find on the internet that I have to know. Um, one thing about me, um, I tried to surf. I'm not very good at it, but I attempted it. We leave that to your brother. <laughs> He's a better surfer than me. I'll give him that. There we go. It evens out. It all evens out for the Pryor brothers. Awesome. My friend, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you very much.